awakening is coming to the whole world. Every man, woman and child will encounter my love of my great mercy. They will have to choose their eternal home, heaven or hell. This is Touched by Heaven, everyday encounters with God. Those moments when heaven and earth collide and we see God, we see his hand reaching out to us, attempting to get our attention inviting us into a closer relationship. Here we share stories of encounter with angels, divine intervention, prophetic dreams. We've got visions, near-death experiences, big and little God incidents. I'm your host, Trapper Jack. Welcome. So glad you're here for episode 137. This is powerful today. This is so powerful. The awakening is coming. What's that? The awakening. Maybe you know it better by the warning. How about the illumination of conscience? Global examination of conscience. The mystics who see this, who have been given this message, uh, many of them with the, the wounds of Christ, many of them with the, you know, the stigmata, have been talking about this more and more throughout the world. Or all, I don't know if there's dozens or how many there are, but there are just increasing numbers of stories of this upcoming event. We talked about this a lot during the Blind Faith Live podcast about the upcoming next big huge event, this examination of conscience. The awakening is coming. What's going to happen then? This is when, the day the earth stood still, this really will be that moment. Everything will come to a standstill as for several minutes, three minutes, five minutes, 15 minutes, whatever it is, everybody on earth is going to be going through this replay of their life. Remember in near-death experiences, this uh, life review, we're all going to get it. And it's going to be in this generation. That's what they're saying now too. This isn't just soon. This is now very soon in this generation. I don't know if that's tomorrow or in 10 years or a month from now. I don't know. But we're moving from soon to very soon. If we sin against somebody, we're going to see it, feel it, experience it from that person's point of view. We are going to see our souls the way God sees our souls. We're going to see the impact of our sin. We are going to see the consequences of our sin, how when we did this, that happened, and that, and that. We are going to experience all of it. It won't be pleasant. This is why in these episodes... I think about the number of people who have talked about going through this in this life. Uh, David, back in the episode, uh, The Cliffhanger, he went through it, brought him to tears. I think about uh, Jose in a in near-death experience. He wanted to come back in that moment and make things right. Faith, episode 98, when she experienced this going on in heaven, and she was allowed to go to heaven, but if she goes, the people left behind, it's not going to be good for them. They're headed the other direction, so she came back to fix the wrongs and lead them in the right direction. Episode 60, you have Laura. She had this experience. By the way, so many of these are from, again, Australia. We've hit this pocket down there. Laura's Australia, Faith Australia. Our guest today, Annette, Australia. David, Australia. What is going down there in Australia? I'm telling you, man. Getting some serious rays of light going on down there. But these uh, these experience, again, this illumination of conscience, the awakening And recently, these messages to Annette, who we'll be talking to, three messages, two from Jesus, one from Mary, but it begins with this awakening. We're all connected now, which is great. I'm going to move this microphone over here so you can hear me better. I can hear you, Trapper. Yes, I can. Okay. So you're in Sydney. Did you grow up in Sydney, or what's your story there? I did. Yeah, yeah, I did, Trapper. I um, I grew up in Sydney um, as a little girl. I actually was born at home on the back doorstep. Um, what does that mean? <laughs> Wait, what does that mean? <laughs> mum was on the phone talking to her mum and next thing you know, she had a couple of pains and uh, stepped outside to the courtyard and she had me in the courtyard. <laughs> so it was a matter of um, when she stepped out, she yelled out to the neighbours, help, help, I'm having a baby. And so she, she met the neighbours. <laughs> this was a game of can you top this? Yeah. How you doing, neighbours? Can you top this? Can you... Uh, <laughs> So yeah. how'd, you, how'd you hear about uh, Touched by Heaven? How'd you hear about the podcast? It possibly, I was possibly on a podcast talk that I was listening to, mainly religious talks, um, priests, um, the Divine Mercy. and Okay. But and I can't remember which, which it was. Yeah, and up we came. Very um, good. Very good. Well, Trapper, I'm actually going through a really most beautiful time of my life where um, – God's given me some really beautiful gifts through my life, Trapper, of um, visions and premonitions and voices and different times in my life. And I 
I acknowledge them and I experience them and I share them with my friends and then I move on. I don't do anything with them and I haven't done anything with them. But um, God's called me back uh, a couple of months ago actually to revisit those situations and to write them down. And I was advised by a girlfriend of mine to uh, approach our local priest to see if uh, I could get some spiritual direction of, along what to do in these situations. But because I'm actually um, actually getting uh, messages actually from our Lord and Our Lady at the moment, Trapper, where um, I've been drawn to go to uh, a suburb in Gosford where I live. Uh, to King Cumber, it's called, and it's actually uh, was an orphanage that Mary MacKillop um, started on the on the coast here, um, and she is our only saint that we have in Australia. It's Mary MacKillop, and um, I've been going to retreats there for twenty odd years with yeah. my parish once a year. I think there's a message that needs to be given to the world, Trapper. I think there's a real wake-up call happening. And it all began, uh, Trapper, after Mass one night. I went to Mass and um, after Communion I um, knelt down to to thank our Lord for Communion and a voice came into my head and the voice said, the awakening's coming. And seeing I had previous experiences of visions and premonitions and voices, I, I didn't just let it go. So I, um, I felt drawn to go to Mary MacKillop's because they have a little grotto there of Our Lady and St Bernadette. And so I went over there one day, drove over there on my own, and I just sat with a little notepad and pen and I just said to our, our Lord and Our Lady and called on the Holy Spirit, um, I'm here, I've got my notepad. If there's something you want me to write, I'm happy to write it. And before I knew it, I had this whole uh, document that I just written that I do believe was from our Lord, yeah. And then the second one was from Our Lady, and I just went with my girlfriend um, on Thursday, just gone, and that one also was from Our Lord. And when this comes in, are you aware of what you're writing? Not at all. You're you're not. You kind of go away. You go away for a while. That's right. Okay. This last one, I actually. Um, dictated to my girlfriend and she actually wrote and she okay. said she couldn't keep up with it because <laughs> it was just there trapper because I've just had hand surgery trapper so I couldn't I couldn't write yeah but um I've been getting since I had the um the word the awakenings coming in the last I suppose maybe two weeks three weeks each time I go to communion now trapper I after communion visions pictures come are coming into my mind and some of them are most beautiful um, visions. Um, and on, must have been Wednesday, I'd have to look my records, but I had a, a vision after communion and it was of, I believe it was St Bernadette um, with a lady on the cloud. And I took that as that I needed to go um, back to King Cumber, to the little grotto, which is a lady and St Bernadette. Yeah, I don't know if it's a connection or not, but my parish is St. Bernadette. Um, oh, really? And um, yeah, uh, we ha- we, my wife and I both have a deep uh, affection for Bernadette and, of course, for Blessed Mother. Um, yes. So, okay, so let's get to, and, and once we kind of go through this, then we can kind of go back to see where this started, because obviously this isn't the beginning point, but it's no, the, it's the point no. where I think we're supposed to start. So when you look at these, what, yeah. th- three messages you've received now? That's right, Trapper. Okay, and you're so calm about this, like, yeah, just, yeah, yeah. because this is just, this just feels kind of normal, doesn't it? It is, Trapper. Um, I I often get um, a sensation um, of the spirit alive in me, and it becomes like an electricity. And a lot of the time it's uh, um, when I'm praise and worshipping, actually, but also in prayer. But right as, as I speak to you now, I'm actually got it. So um, my spirit is... Um, is very alive with the the light of Christ. I think. Yeah, Trapper. and when you share yeah. this with a priest, I'm assuming that nothing that you wrote down is in opposition to anything scriptural, because that's always the big question. But these these things always have to be in alignment, and you have found that to be true. Yes, mm-hmm. yes. Well, um, my parish priest, when I first approached him with my first message, um, he said to me, 
that um, God has given you. He said you're. He said you're blessed. He said because not many people have have these experiences that you have had. Because I shared with him the experiences that I've had through my life of different um, supernatural or spiritual connections. Um, and he said, I think you should go back. He said because each of those experiences would have a message with them. And he said you, he felt that I should go back in prayer and ask God what was the message for all these different experiences. But when I went back, God didn't want me to um, look at those experiences. He actually wanted had another message he wanted to give now. So, okay. um, all right, let's yeah. go. Let's go to the messages then. Let's find out what uh, what they want us to know. Okay, well, this one, uh, Trapper, was on the twenty. Oh, sorry, on the eleventh of October this year, at four p.m. at St Joseph's um, Kingcumber. And what um, came to me was, my child, write this as I speak, Jesus. The awakening is coming to the whole world. Every man, woman, and child will encounter my love of my great mercy. They will have to choose their eternal home, heaven or hell. My priests will also have to choose. They must prepare their souls to help my children. The broken, lost, wounded and forsaken will come to to them in this time. They must be with me and truly believe I am the eternal son. The hour is near. My priests must commit themselves to me totally, mind, body and spirit. I will guide them in my word and spirit. My mother is with every one of them, protecting them and praying for them. She is the light and grace to my heart. Tell my priests to prepare also material needs, as what is to come will be a most difficult time for them. They must believe in me and that I am with them and that I love them. So many of my children have no faith and they're hurting themselves and others like a disease. Speak to my children, my daughter, and tell them come back to the truth and love and they will find that peace and joy they search for. And this is about the time I found your website too, Trapper. I wait for them with my open arms, with my merciful heart that beats for them. When I was in my passion, I saw all the souls that will come to my love and truth and they gave me the strength to carry on. Their love helped carry me, and now I offer the same and much more to those souls. Be in good spirits, my daughter. My mother and I will guide you. Peace, my child, Jesus. When you took a look at what you had written down, were you aware of this global examination of conscience that is coming? Had you heard about that yes. before? Yes, I, yes, I did. But I didn't know it as the awakening. I knew it as the warning. Mm-hmm. Where everybody for, I, the impression I get is for a few minutes has all their sins flash before their eyes. Is that what we're talking about? Same thing here? Yep. Yeah. Yep. And they can choose Jesus. They can choose I'm sorry, or they can, ch- or they can reject. It's, yes. it's hard to imagine someone rejecting, but, but we know they will. Because, yeah. You know, so okay. that came in October 11th. You know That's what it's correct. about, this awakening. Um, yes. That the, you know, we never know the, the, the timeliness of this. This We never know when that is to come. No. It's in God's time. <laughs> it's God's timing. You think about Sister Faustina and everything she was told back in the 30s, and I'm sure there yeah. seemed to be an imminent something about to happen, divine mercy being offered. We are in such a merciful time, aren't we? We are in such Absolutely. A- Absolutely. And my last message I got from our Lord was exactly along that lines. Okay. Let's move to message number two. And when did that come in? This came in uh, Trapper on the 23rd of October. St. Joseph's Kingcumber again. It begins with my child, thank you for coming. In this beautiful morning that you come to sit with me, the world is in darkness but unable to see my son's hand of justice that is about to come to the world. My children's light must shine bright into the world. In trust and in your prayers, we guide you, my children, and we will lead you through this darkness to a new time of peace. My daughter, pray for those souls at this most difficult times. 
they are lost and walking in darkness. My son is my son is the true light of this world. All other things are temporal, but his light is for eternity. Put love into the world through kindness, forgiveness and faith. This is what my son brought into the world from his example and teachings. The father's grace is being poured out poured out onto humanity greatly at this time to strengthen the children of God and to awaken the sleeping and to heal the broken. In this beauty of this day, you see God. The people of this time also need to see and know my son. Through my children, be lights to the world and bring true love to one another. My son Jesus and I brought love to the world while we walked on the earth. And now also we give love from above, from as we have since arrived here in paradise. Come back to God, you children. Well, actually, it was at come back to you, God preachers. And listen to my son, who is the way, the truth and the life. And be at peace in your mind, body and spirit. The Holy Spirit of God will guide you home for eternity. Peace, my child, your mother Mary. That is beautiful. Go back to that word preaches. What, what was that sentence? What, it, what were you saying? Oh, creatures. Creatures. Oh, creatures. Okay, read that sentence yeah. again. Then. Read that sentence again. Sure. Come back to God, you creatures, and listen to my son, who is the way, the truth, and the life. Oh, okay. Okay. Beautiful. From Mary that time. It sounded, yeah. very, it sounded very Magigoria, didn't it? it? sounded very Magigoria yeah. in her messages. And, uh, yeah, I actually have been to Bajagori, and that was an amazing one of my most one of many amazing experiences. I'm getting the trip. impression everybody's been there but me at this point. I've talked to so many people lately that have, that have <laughs> been there, and they're, and most of them from Australia. So whatever that connection is, you've got going down there, you know. <laughs> um, well, we are known as uh, the land of the Holy Spirit. Well, that's nice. That's nice. Very good. All right. So yeah. that was October 23rd. Uh, we got yep. Mary, and then what's your next message, and from whom? Mm, it's from our Lord, and the problem is um, I didn't, I couldn't write it. These other two I've written. The third one is on my phone that my girlfriend emailed to me after she scribed her her writings. I think it was about ten o'clock in the morning. Uh, this came last Thursday, which was <laughs> what as we record this. So November nineteenth of twenty twenty, you got this. Yes. Okay. Yep. Yeah. yeah, my loving child. It is with my grace that brings you here. You are one of my children that I ask to walk in this world and in this light, to be a messenger of light in this time you live. Oh, the darkness of, your, of the souls. My light can bring truth and break through the darkness in souls. I hold your hand gently and I will bring light to the world. The light of my love is upon all creation. Come to my mercy, the well of love. Be washed and renewed in my mercy of love. The time is now to awaken from your sleep and to walk boldly into this darkness that I will, will become light. A time is come for the flowers to blossom, to awaken your senses to my great love. You will see with your eyes the greatness of my love your souls will rejoice and be glad. Lift your eyes up to heaven and watch and wait, for my coming to the world is at hand. Be not afraid, for my mother is with you. My legions of angels and saints are coming upon the world. They fight this battle that currently the world is in, but my mercy of my blood and water has spared many souls. Be renewed and refreshed, for my light of grace is upon the world. Be at peace, my child. My Father's will be done. Your loving Jesus. Wow. Beautiful. Uh, absolutely beautiful. Tell me what, when you read that, what did it mean to you? It's still very overwhelming to me, to be honest with you, Trapper, even though I, I have had some most beautiful experiences through my life. I think God's actually bringing me to have the understanding of um, the beautiful gift he actually is giving me because I, I have 
I have the faith of a very of a childlike faith um, trapper. So I'm very simplistic in um, what I think and and do and say. I um I'm not a theologian or a academic by no means. As you can see, I still struggle with the computer, <laughs> but um I think it's just it's a outpouring of love to for humanity and and uh, and a great trust in in his in the Father's will and the and the mercy that he's he he has for us that he wants to pour out on us. It's, it's really really very beautiful. But he does appear to be preparing us for the end of an age. I suspect so myself. I feel that very much. But I'm not afraid because I, I have that childlike faith that I believe, you know, and I believe whatever is God's will, our Father's will, it will be done. So, um, Go back to that you know. part in, the, uh, in that message because he talks about uh, he's coming. You yeah. know, and we never know when he's coming. And there are also different theories on on on. I'm kind of curious about your your belief in this. There are those who believe that he is going to come, and there's well, how do I put this? Tell me, tell the sleeping, the walking sleeping. <laughs> do you say it that I I talk about sleepwalking Christians all the time? Really, uh, that's the first time I've ever said it. That's the first time you've ever said it. Yeah. Years ago, I, I yeah. used that term, and um, it kind of clicked that uh, so many Christians are sleepwalking. They're just they call you know we call ourselves Christians, but are we living the Christian life? I I hear that childlike nature in you. I hear your Christianity. I hear your love. I hear your innocence. I hear all the things in you that we all need to kind of grab as much as we can for ourselves. All within our own personality. I think one of the beautiful things about God is that He doesn't change. He doesn't want to change our personality, but he does want to mold that personality a bit. But we all come a little differently, you know? Absolutely. I often pray to um, our Father, our Heavenly Father, when I'm saying my prayers. I remember a long time ago I heard a song and it was um, the sculpture, the sculptor, you know, and that we're all uh, a lump of clay in God's hands. And he's sculpting us. So he's gently chipping away um, the things that aren't necessary in us uh, to, do, to define us and to create a most beautiful masterpiece in us, you know. And um, so I, I just keep saying to the Heavenly Father, keep chipping away, keep chipping away, you yeah, know. Yeah. Don't and that's give what up. he does. And he smooths us yeah. out and he brings us along. And we're still who we are. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay, let's go back to that sentence where he does talk about I'm 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 coming. You know, go back to that. Can you find that? The time is now to awaken from your sleep and to walk boldly into the darkness that will become light. The time is come for the flowers to blossom to awaken your senses to my great love. You will see with your eyes the greatness of my love. Your soul will rejoice and be glad. Lift your eyes up to heaven and watch and wait, for my coming to the world is at hand. You can stop right there. It's at hand. Yeah, 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 it is. But message number three where he says, my coming is at hand, is that the same as the awakening is, uh, is coming? The awakening is coming. My coming is at hand. And talking about arriving with with angels, legions of angels, and the warfare that is that is at hand here. This is building towards something, isn't it? My coming is at hand. Uh, this is something we also talked about during the Blind Faith Live episode, um, coming for his church, St. Paul in 1 Thessalonians, talking about uh, meeting Christ in the air. Most churches do not believe that's rapture. Some do. But in the Blind Faith Live podcast, we talked about this, about this mini-rapture, of the the best of the best, the holiest of the holiest, there's the second outpouring of the Holy Spirit that is coming through this awakening that those who turn towards Christ, say they're sorry, are going to be given more, that, that, that Holy Spirit will dwell even stronger. Joel, the book of Joel, talking about the second outpouring of the Holy Spirit, greater than the first, the apostles, of course, the first outpouring, and now greater than the first is going to is, is coming up here will that then lead to this 
percentage-wise, small band of people being filled with the Holy Spirit? And does Jesus come for his church? Lift your eyes up to heaven and watch and wait, for my coming to the world is at hand. Mini rapture, as we talked about in the Blind Faith Live podcast. It's, it's, I put all those three messages together. I'm, to me, it correlates perfectly with what we talked about a few years back with BFL. I had a, a beautiful, as I was saying to you, I've been having beautiful um, visions after I had come back from communion for quite a number of weeks now. And I had a beautiful one yesterday. And what it was was um, there were people on the ground and they had their hands up in the air. So I don't know whether it was fear or whether it was wonder or shock, but what they were looking up to the sky and what I saw were the clouds, very fluffy clouds, and they parted. And what I saw as they, as they parted, I saw our Lord and he was coming towards the earth and there was a gold, a gold bright light that was behind him. And it was like people, I don't know if they were shocked or, you know, so to me that was, you know, there's something coming and um, we've, we've got to be switched on and be aware because it's our ter- eternal souls that this is about. And I, I totally, 100 plus, 1,000 percent believe there is a spiritual war going on and people aren't aware and um, they're just floating along and going with the norms but they don't realise that um, the importance of what life is in itself is and that our journey is very very important it's a serious matter it's not something just to scoff off or take notice of um but you know the I'll, i call satan hairy legs so if i could say hairy legs that's who i'm referring to because i don't like to give him his name because um i don't think i think he's a hairy legs so that's what I call him. If, you, if you're ever wondering what that's so all about, so Satan is hairy legs. Got it. We got the code word yeah. here. Okay. He was the highest angel in heaven, and he was given the most gifts of all angels. So he's very clever. So you know, I say to my friends, you know, just remember, you know, you might you might be given a lollipop that looks good and might even taste good, but the reality is, what's inside it is poisonous, and it'll destroy you and it'll kill you. So we just have to be aware that not all good things that look great or sound great or, you know, uh, are great. They can actually be a very deceptive sight um, and a tool. Your sense, though, is that with all this evil, and there's just so much evil out there, oh, my gosh, everyone is offended, everyone's mad, everyone's angry, everyone's unforgiving. Everyone is, oh, I'm just, there's, you just see, you see Christians not even aware yeah, that's right. Satan is just playing so many of us with this unforgiving, you know, supposedly righteous, but it's a wrong kind of righteous. Absolutely. It all comes from hairy legs. It all comes from hairy legs. That's it. And I'm but hairy but legs. I did I hear you say though that you don't think God's gonna let him do this much longer, that something's about no, to give I in don't. the world. Something's about to give. Yeah. Tell me yep. what you think I, is gonna happen. I think it'll be the illumination of conscience. I, I truly believe that the uh, our Heavenly Father is not going to continue to let the world destroy each other. I, I, you know, I really believe that I was meant to talk to you, Trapper. I do believe our beautiful mother has um, sent me to you um, mm. to, to let people know that God is real, God is love, but he, he, he loves us to a point that he puts... Um, he puts things in place so that we're not going to hurt ourselves or destroy ourselves. So it comes back to the Ten Commandments. Those beautiful commandments are there and created out of love so that we can be in, in the fullness of God's love while we're here on earth and then hopefully be able to um, transcend to our eternal life, Trapper. I had a, a beautiful, as I was saying to you, I've been having beautiful um, visions after I had come back from communion. I saw a beautiful one today, actually, after communion, and uh, I never thought about it until just recently. And what it was is um, I saw it was a medium-sized room and I saw, I think that might have been saints, but I saw elderly people with robes on and they had, they had the halos around their heads. And I haven't actually seen any visions with halos before, but these people 
had halos and they were standing around the room and in the middle of it there was a huge, huge angel and the angel had his wings closed up to his chest but he was a big, big angel. And as I watched, the angel opened his wings up wide and what was in his wings was like a... um, I don't know if it was a metal, but it was a, a container, a holder, and it looked like a, a flower, like the shapes of a flower, um, petals, but it was a metal kind of thing, and there was a flame coming from this um, this holder. And as I looked, this flame that was just little just grew to a massive, massive um, size and um, came to me not long ago that... Um, that I'm to meant to speak to you to because that flame needs to grow. It needs to because oh, it's so beautiful. I can't, God's been working beautiful for me, Trapper. About, I don't know, maybe the beginning of the year or, you know, early in the year, it was put on my heart to start praying for people as I'm in the car to drive and pray the Holy Spirit, the flame, the Holy Spirit to enkindle in people's souls. So that's what I do. I pray that um, I pray the Holy Spirit upon all the souls that are going past me in the cars. And um, so uh, I don't know if that's connected to this beautiful flame that I saw today, but um, that's just beautiful. And the other thing that I started this year, I, I have a girlfriend that I've known since I was 12, and that in itself is a, a beautiful story, her, our, our journey. But um, we started to praying the rosary and the divine mercy together at uh, end of last year. And then uh, maybe January, Elizabeth, her name's Elizabeth, she said it was, it, I think she said it was January. I had placed on my heart and my mind to start praying for the world, but every country individually. So we're up to about maybe 150, 160 countries we've prayed for so far. Each night in our prayers we dedicate to one country of the world and um, and that was before corona hit or anything knowing of corona but there was a real um, a real need to pray for for each country so I'm very pleased to say that we're blessed that we are. We're nearly at the end, actually. We're on the P's at the moment. <laughs> oh, you're P. doing it alphabetically. I like that. Yeah, we're doing it alphabetically. So was it America or United States? Oh, that's a good question. Let me just go and have a little look. Yeah, take a look. I See, thought, I'm curious if we have to wait. Oh, my gosh. You know, Mary. No, actually, I think because <laughs> when the corona hit, when the corona hit, we started hitting the countries that were getting hit. We actually detoured off our list, and we actually went for the um, the countries that were being hit by Corona. Because uh, you can't help but see, you can't help but see. Oh, sometimes it's called the Great Reset. Sometimes it's called New, you know, New World Order. You can just see, Order, yeah. you you can see the evil wrapped around all that stuff. How everyone's acting in locks. Uh, you're kind of fading on me, but go ahead, give me your opinion on it. Never waste a crisis is the way many look at this, and there are there the either the the dark side the those who are operated by the hairy legs. You can see them operating within this COVID. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. And um, I remember when I came back from Magigore and had the most beautiful experiences. I went. I was drawn to get some spiritual direction. Direction, and I went to our local Monsignor at the time. And I said, um, Monsignor Marley, who should I speak to, to about this, my beautiful gift that I've been given from Magigore? And he said, you need to speak to this particular priest, which I can't remember his name. And so I went and spoke to him, and this is just about hairy legs. He said that he was a parish priest in Newcastle, which is a little further up the coast, and he said one day he got a knock on the door and he, to the um presbytery and he opened the door and there were these young people there and they said we're looking for father whatever his name was and he said uh, that's uh, that's me and they said you're doing a lot of harm in our community we're satanists and we're here to stop you and he said he turned around to them and said get behind me satan and close the door but instantly he lost complete control of his hands 
they cursed him um, there and then. And he said he went straight into his little chapel that he had, they have in the presbytery and he said he kneeled in front of our Lord and he prayed to our Lord and he said, Dear Lord, if this is of, from you, I accept it with love, but if it's not, please help me. And he said as soon as he said that prayer, his hands came back instantly by one finger, one finger he couldn't straighten. And he said our Lord kept, left that with him to let him remind him that Satan does have power. So that was always something I've remembered that don't be dismissive of what uh, old hairy legs um, is capable of doing. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah well, absolutely. Yeah. He's the ruler of this world. He's the ruler. Absolutely. You know, absolutely. His influence. Yes. I, I. What a shame it is. I've mentioned this before. What a shame that we do not feel all the love that God is pouring down on us because of old hairy oh. legs. You know, this. we oh. live in such a fallen world that we just can't feel it the way he's sending it. We just yeah. can't. And uh, how unfortunate. But this, but it's there, and we know it's there. And sometimes oh. sometimes we get touches of it, and I know you obviously are. Sometimes, and I, I, that's why some of these near-death experiences I love so much, because they are out of this world, and they are in that other yes. world, yes. and they feel it. Yes. And they don't want to come back. I mean, it's like, why would no. I ever want to leave this? One. But I love the fact that we have those little remnants of the reality of, of that love, of what that feels like. Can I give you a, um, a little little gift that I received from my first message that I received out of the three messages in this little grotto that was really overgrown and weeds everywhere? As I'd finished receiving my message, I just looked beside me and there was a little dandelion do you know what a dandelion is? Oh. They're the little fluffy things that yeah, you blow them and they're like fairies. Yeah. There was a little dandelion, just one, just just there, and I picked it and I thought, oh, and I went to blow it because I, I do that with my grandchildren, you know, and it wouldn't blow. And then I was drawn to try and touch it. And I don't know if you've ever tried to touch a dandelion. And the dandelion was that soft that you, I really had to focus in and, and block out my other distractions to be actually able to feel this dandelion. And when I did feel it, it was in my heart, this is my, this is my softness and my gentleness of my love. And then as I looked, I looked at the, the dandelion and as you know, the dandelion is full of all these little seeds or these little um, arms that make it up. And what came to me is this is my great love that I hold in my gentleness. So if you stop and let and and be with me and don't be um, distracted by the world and the worldly things, in my gentleness is where my great love and my great mercy is. And it's about sharing that to others. So when you blow the dandelion, it shares and more more come, you know. So it's it's and I've still got the little dandelion. <laughs> I've got a little, little on a, in a little container now. But yeah, it was the most beautiful gift and something. I was saying to my friend Elizabeth the other night, um, the dandelion. Most people wouldn't even give a second thought to, you know, that it's it's just a weed kind of thing. But it brought me back to that it's in the things that people don't realise. They think they're not important. They're actually very important you know, and um, it was a beautiful little gift to, to remind me, you know. That's beautiful. Know. I, I, yeah. No, that, is to, that is totally beautiful. And it, uh, it, it reminds me too that even though we may not feel that love the way we might want to, in those quiet moments, it's there. Yeah. It is there. Absolutely. It is, Absolutely. It is there. It's the, as you say, it's the distractions of that everyday the everyday worries, the everyday thoughts, the every t you know, just those things that take us away from connecting the way we should be. Sometimes it's our own heads that won't, won't stop, you know. But if you can, just to be in the moment, I think, you know, to, to travel in the moment, it's just absolutely beautiful. Let me ask you this, um, your sense of, yes. you know, this um, illumination of conscience, this uh, global examination of conscience. Yes, yes. Before that happens... What do you think happens in this world? Give I us, don't know. You don't know. Okay. And I'm not. I'm not. 
uh, as I said to you, I'm a, a simple woman, so I, I try not to think about what might happen or might not happen. I try to be, I'm a person, I try to live in the moment and just take one day, one step at a time and I leave the rest to God um, because if I started assuming or um, even planning um, in a big way, I think I'd get distracted and I don't want to be distracted from um, my purpose and my purpose, I believe, is um, to give love. And um, I'm very humbled by that. But yeah. um, I, when I give love, I give it sincerely and um, I give it completely. And um, I prayed to God for a long time to be an instrument of his and um, to be a little handmaid. And that's what I hope um, that I am and I hope that's what God wants me to do. That's beautiful. I know one of the great lessons for me. I tend to want. I tend to want to uh, grab and and I want to assume. And I think I know what he means by this. And one of the great lessons, especially of late, uh, I'm getting better. Not perfect, but I'm getting better at just as I as I call it. Just let him drop the cookie into the hand versus grabbing the cookie, which is just right. just just let him speak to you. Just just let it come. That's it. He's going to let That's you know it. what he wants you to know. Don't grab for things. He's going to deliver. He actually delivers, you know, to the and door. And he's very gen. Oh, absolutely. And he, he he's very generous as well and detailed. He doesn't forget not a thing that you need, you know. Amen. So very beautiful. Amen to that. Absolutely amen. You know, I've been so impressed. I, I guess I have to ask this, not that I'll, I'll <laughs> that you have an answer for this, but um, I've been so impressed, especially of late. I've talked to so many people in Australia. We've hit kind of a pocket down there somehow, this Australian <laughs> slash Magigoria pocket, and, and so many wonderful listeners down there by the thousands listen to Australia. Oh, fabulous. Uh, it is. And um, I, um, I'm just amazed at how aware you are of the world in ways that we are not here in the U.S. I mean, you're more aware of what's going on in the U.S. on both the political and faith, yes. faith front, I think, than we are. Ah. Oh, I'll well, tell you what, I, I can only speak for myself and my, my dear sister in Christ, Elizabeth. We're praying earnestly for America at the moment. And um, we can see that uh, old heretics is really trying to uh, de destroy the country and democracy. And we believe that America is... Uh, um, uh, is a, is a is a, I was I want to say is the number one country that stands for democracy, and um, you're you're a brother to our country and a friend, um, and I just I don't know I don't know what's going to happen, Trapper. I don't know. Well, there are many people, many of us who believe Mary's going to do something rather spectacular in this country. A lady will stand with God's will. She she loves us because you know our, our Lord gave her to us and gave us to her, and um, a mother's love is um, it's it, it's 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 untouchable in the sense that it's um, it can never be broken, you know. Ooh, did I hear thunder? So you can, you can. Oh, listen. did you hear God talking? Did you hear God talking? Uh, he's, he's, he is talking. <laughs> the power of God and the power of uh, Mary that he keep he well, he keeps sending her to us, doesn't he? That's that's his favorite spokeswoman. Oh. Keeps sending her to, to earth. Absolutely, absolutely. I, I'd love to share with you my beautiful story of Magigore. I mean, I've got lots of things to share with you because I could tell you all the different experiences that I've I've had in my life as well. Well, let's say we do that next week, or real soon. We'll, we'll see how the spirit goes. I, I assume it's going to be next week, part two with Annette, because early, early in her life, God saved her life more than once. She's had some incredible encounter stories. We want to get to those as well. But let's take a look at what's going to happen. What, what is the consensus of the mystics of what is going to happen when we have this global examination of conscience, this awakening? This illumination of conscience, what will most people do with it? They say we're going to have like two, two and a half weeks to make up our mind. Are we with Christ? Are we saying we're sorry? Are we turning more to holiness or away? The general consensus is most will turn away. What? Yeah. How, how is that possible? 
There's even going to be a sign in the sky. They say, many of them say the same thing, which is in the sky. We'll be able to see it up there. We're going to see this sign of Christ on the cross, but not crucified, glorified with the rays of light pouring through his wounds down to us. And still we say no. Why? Well, that could be trickery. That could be, ah, you could do that with lasers. Heck, you can go to Disney World and see that. Shoot it up in the sky. And then, you know, who knows? Who knows? Really rich people are doing that to you. They're trying to fool you. What do you think? Excuse me. But what do you think the news media is going to do with this? Turn you towards God? Are you kidding? Think about Jesus when he's walking around. He's talking to the Pharisees. Christ himself is in front of them. He's telling them the truth. What do they want? They wanted him dead. So if that gives you maybe some indication here, most will go back into old patterns. We will slip back into old patterns. What will media be doing? They're going to be helping us slip into old patterns, aren't they? We will be swayed and swayed, and Satan will be at work to take us away from what we just experienced, and most people will turn away, which is why these announcements, if you will, whether through this podcast, YouTube event, tell you what, put a link into this episode to uh, 137 at touchbyheaven.net to a, a really good uh, YouTube video about this stuff as well. Or you can go look yourself. Just put in uh, Illumination of Conscience or uh, sometimes under warning, uh, and, and a number of these kinds of episodes will pop up with this kind of information if you want more information about it. But, uh, but that's, uh, that is what's coming. The awakening, the warning, the illumination of conscience, the global examination of conscience, this great moment of mercy by Christ. He doesn't have to do this. But he is one last stab at waking us up. The sleepwalking world, especially Christians, we should know better. The sleepwalking Christians just stumbling through life who are going to turn away. And this is the time right now to, to go into repentance and to connect again to those near-death experiences because it's saying the same thing, what they've been experiencing, these life reviews. That's what we're going to get. That's what we're going to get. And it's going to happen in our generation. That's the other part of this message. We're going to see this, guys. We are going to see this. Not just soon, but very soon. The awakening is coming to the whole world. Every man, woman, and child will encounter my love of my great mercy. They will have to choose their eternal home, heaven or hell. My priests will also have to choose. They must prepare the souls to help my children. The broken, lost, wounded, and forsaken will come to, the, to them in this time. They must be with me and truly believe I am the eternal son. The hour is near. My priests must commit themselves to me totally, mind, body, and spirit. I will guide them in my word and spirit. My mother is with every one of them, protecting them and praying for them. She is the light and grace to my heart. Tell my priest to prepare also material needs, as what is to come will be of most difficult time for them. They must believe in me and that I am with them and that I love them. So many of my children have no faith and they're hurting themselves and others like a disease. Speak to my children, my daughter, and tell them come back to the truth and love and they will find that peace and joy they search for. And this is about the time I found your website too, Trapper. I wait for them with my open arms, with my merciful heart that beats for them. When I was in my passion, I saw all the souls that will come to my love and truth, and they gave me the strength to carry on. Their love helped carry me, and now I offer the same and much more to those souls. Be in good spirits, my daughter. My mother and I will guide you. Peace, my child, Jesus. All right. Thanks so much again, Annette. I think next week you're on again. I think. (laughs) Anything else bubbling up? If you want a correlating, paralleling uh, video stream on this, we do a weekly series called Men's Morning Lights on uh, Facebook and YouTube, Men's Morning Light. Kind of a parallel thing inside the church, outside the church, kind of how all this kind of all ties together. You want to check that out, Men's Morning Light. It's a... an interesting um, add-on to what we're, we're getting here this week with the awakening. So uh, check that out. What's your story? You could tell me a story. It's not a competition. Just tell me your story at touchedbyheaven.net.
Net. Appreciate that. My Patreon shout out this week goes to Matt Sanders. Thank you so much, Matt, for your support on a monthly basis. If you feel blessed by these episodes and fortified in your faith, or maybe they help you find your faith, then um, we would certainly appreciate your financial support. At uh, You can go through Patreon directly, patreon.com. Just look for Trapper Jack or a link through here at episode 137. Also here at 137, just click on that Stay Informed. There are other stories happening in the Touched by Heaven universe. I'd like to send you uh, the a weekly email. I'm happy to do that for you, but here at, uh, we have the link right here. Stay informed, okay? And thanks for keeping us a five-star podcast in your apps and ratings and reviews. All right, let's say we do this again next week. Good idea, Trapper. See you next week here at Touched by Heaven. Everyday Encounters with God. I'm Trapper Jack. Lift your eyes up to heaven and watch and wait, for my coming to the world is at hand.